Hello there and welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen video. I recently produced a video where I showed you the top five pens in my entire collection. The top fountain pen on that list is a Pelican M800. The second fountain pen is a Leonardo Momento Zero Blue Hawaii, the one that does the opening scribble in J. Urbain Kyanite du Nepal ink. The interesting thing about number one and number two is that I have only one Pelican, but I own nine Leonardos. So when I'm asked which fountain pen brand is my favorite, it's a difficult question because Pelican makes or made what I think is the finest fountain pen on the planet, the Pelican Souverain M800 series, but they are very limited in variety. Whereas Leonardo Alfacina Italiana and specifically Salvatore Firo and Maria Francesca Matrone make what I consider the most exciting fountain pens in the world. And now that I have this beautiful new Leonardo Supernova, I own or I have owned one of each of their main collection pen styles. And I thought it was time to look at them and determine which is best right now. In addition to the $50 I paid to ship this from Apple Bomb via DHL, I paid another $22 in extortion fee. Only $3 of that was tax. And here's the familiar green Apple Bomb box. And here we are with another card from Apple Bomb, a thank you, with a suggested purchase for next time, carefully packed by Yoast himself. Well, what a fine job you've done, Yoast, and thank you for the Stroop waffles. They go to a Dutch friend of mine. There are only two things I can't stand in this world. People who are intolerant of other people's cultures and the Dutch. What? And here's our box. Wrapped by Applebaum. They always do such a great job of packaging. You hate to disturb it, but I will anyway. And here is my Leonardo box. It says Supernova. Leonardo Officina Italiana, which means Leonardo Italian. And let's slide out box. And here's the box. And we have the international guarantee. Let's see what the guarantee is in length. There's Ciro Matroni at his workshop. And nowhere on here does it say how long that guarantee is. Well, I'll have to look that up. And here's the pen. And I ordered an extra nib as well for my friend Ron. This is a steel number six Leonardo in broad. And here is the Supernova. It's beautiful. Look at that acrylic. I was very interested to see this pen. It has a interesting shape as compared to my other Leonardos. The other Leonardos have a step right there. This one, combines the step into the the barrel. I wanted to see how sharp that was. It's got an edge to it, but where do you hold the pen? Yeah, that's very comfortable. Oh, I like that section. It's nice and big. And I decided on ruthenium trim on this one. I've not gone for dark trim before, but I thought that the black lines in the, I always call this amber as a cat because amber as a cat pen BBS is the first kind of tiger's eye acrylic I ever had and so it will forever be amber as a cat for me and I thought that the black lines in this amber acrylic might lend themselves to the darker trim and on first blush I quite like it a lot and whoa that was so nicely and it's just slightly bigger than a Momento Zero and we remove the section and you'll see ink in there because Annabelle tuned the nib for me and I got a broad so that Jack Hernandez could cut that into an architect for me. So the Leonardo Supernova in caramel and ruthenium trim. 
I'm going to go through the main collection of Leonardo Affettina Italiana fountain pens on the quote collection page of their website and comment on each. Then I'll review the supernova that I just unboxed, do some size comparisons and measurements, and provide a writing sample. I'll provide some empirical comparison of the models, and then try to determine which of the Leonardo models is best. As always, your mileage may vary. Your mileage may vary. And I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like about the supernova. Skip ahead to the review of the supernova using the chapters provided below if you're in a rush. But I'll give you the skinny right now. I like the supernova with a couple of reservations. Now, on with the showcase of Leo's. I should mention that Leonardo makes several specialty models in a ton of limited editions and limited finish editions. I'm not even going to attempt to enumerate them all. When Salvatore and Maria Francesca Matrone started the Leonardo brand in 2017, the first models designed and introduced were the Momento Zero and the Furore, which in Italian means the zero moment or absolute beginning and the Fury respectively. I think this means that they wanted to go back to the beginnings and foundations of Italian fountain pen design with Fury and Passion. That's my interpretation, and I'm sticking to it. And that is even though the Ferrore is probably named after the region of Italy between Sorrento and Amalfi, known for its furious waves and stormy weather. And we're just looking at what Leonardo calls its collection series, which are its main production models. I'm going to show them in order of size and date of introduction. So the Momento Zero Grande first, followed by the MZG2, etc. First, the Momento Zero Grande. The model was introduced in 2018. It is a large piston filler with a number 6 size, 14 karat gold nib with an ebonite feed, pointed finials, a roller clip, no ink window, and the distinctive milk bottle shaped section. Similar but larger than the one on the original Momento Zero and Forores. This one, however, is the special limited edition Dutch Pen Show 2021 in Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2 acrylic resin. It has an 18 karat gold nib and with the Dutch Pen Show emblem laser etched into the nib. The Momento Zero Grande has 14 standard finishes and ranges from $320 for the steel to $720 US for their 14 karat gold nib. Most of the Leonardo models and finishes are available in gold, rhodium, or silver trim with choices of nibs in EF, F, M, B, 1.1 stub, and elastic in either steel or gold. The elastic is not available in gold, to my knowledge. And next, the Momento Zero Grande 2. I'm unsure of the exact date, but somewhere around 2021-2022, Leonardo released a new incarnation of the MZG, the MZG 2.0. Here is my MZG 2.0 in an acrylic finish called Stardust. The MZG 2.0's main feature difference from the MZG is the large ink window, but they changed the section as well to a large barrel shape with a slight taper and a small flare towards the nib. Although I do like this section, I do prefer the original milk bottle shape. The milk bottle shape is unique and fits my grip perfectly. The MZG2 is available in six acrylic finishes and sells for $278 for the steel and $770 US for the gold nib. And next, the Momento Zero Grande Masterpiece. This is a Leonardo limited edition and so is not part of the main collection, but I like to show it off because it's not only stunningly gorgeous, it illustrates some of the special limited edition variations Salvatore and Maria Francesca produce quite regularly. They are, of course, pricey as they are limited and they sell out very quickly and you'll never see them again. I snapped this one up because I was stunned by the ebonite finish and what looks like rosewood. This is the Leonardo Momento Zero Masterpiece Ebonite Rosewood, and it has a 14 karat gold Leonardo La Fenice nib. These are gold nibs made in-house by Leonardo, whereas the standard nibs provided on the collection series are made by Yovo. La Fenice is Italian for the Phoenix. Again, the motif or metaphor of rising from the ashes of previous incarnations. That's my take on it anyway. 
This MZG masterpiece is the same as the normal MZG in size and shape, but the section has been borrowed from the MZG 2.0. These are out of stock and unavailable. And next up is the Furore Grande. The Furore Grande came about after many requests of the Matronis for a large version of the original Furore. This is my Furore Grande in Smeraldo acrylic. It has a steel medium nib and ebonite feed. This is one of the most consistent and comfortable of my Leonardo's and the Smeraldo acrylic is mesmerizing to say the least. The only downside to this pen is the maintenance as the piston mechanism is glued in and the nib and feed do not unscrew. I think the newer versions of the Ferrari Grande have nib units and unscrewable pistons, but I'm not sure. If you have one, please let me know. This one was given to me by Salvatore himself and I treasure it. The Ferrari Grande comes in four standard finishes and sells for $270 for the steel and $450 US for the gold nib version. And on to the first fountain pen designed by the new company in 2017, the Momento Zero. This is my first Leonardo as well. It is the Momento Zero Blue Hawaii and has a steel number six size Bach nib that was custom ground into an architect for me by Jack Hernandez. I use this pen constantly, and it always has J. Urbain Kyanite du Nepal ink in it. This is the pen that does the scrawl at the beginning of my videos. I also have a second Momento Zero here in another gorgeous spaghetti acrylic resin called Prunia, and it has rose gold trim. The Momento Zero has a milk bottle shaped section and an unscrewable nib unit with a black plastic feed. All of the nibs that are not in-house La Fenice gold nibs are Yovo now. This one is a Yovo steel nib unit. The Momento Zero is a cartridge converter pen where the converter has an elongated piston knob that is accessible through the unscrewable blind cap so you can charge the feed on the fly quickly. Really nice feature. The Momento Zero model comes in 14 acrylic finishes and sells for $160 for the steel and $360 US for the gold nib. And the Furore. I think the Furore is the most underestimated and underrated Leonardo model. Here is my Furore in Galaxy Blue. It has a steel medium nib and has the same blind cap and cartridge converter feature as the Momento Zero along with the same milk bottle section. I have a second Furore in this beautiful white pearlescent acrylic that Leonardo calls salt. I don't use this pen as often as the others, even though it has this sublime broad steel nib custom ground by Jack because I fear staining the white acrylic of the section. The Furores come in seven standard acrylic finishes and sells for $160 for the steel and $345 US for the gold nib. The other models in the Leonardo collection are versions of these basic models, except for my new Supernova and the Magico. I bought a Magico, reviewed it, and then sold it. You can see that review by clicking here. I'll post the links to the reviews of the videos of all these pens in the description below. The Pura model is a semi-clear acrylic version of the Memento Zero. The Mosaico model is a horizontal spaghetti acrylic version of the MZG Masterpiece. And the Odice Guiache is a limited edition model. So, my newest Leonardo, the Supernova. I got this one in an acrylic finish called Caramel with ruthenium trim and plated steel broad nib. The broad nib is a thick, juicy fire hose, as you'll see. Overall, the Supernova in size sits between the MZG 2.0 and the Momento Zero. The Supernova is thicker than the Momento Zero in the barrel and the section, although the Supernova section is a modified, more refined milk bottle shape, which I really like. The main shape feature of the Supernova, as opposed to every other Leonardo model, is the fact that the cap and the barrel are flush when the pen is capped. This feature naturally results in a large step down from the barrel to the section when the pen is uncapped. This step, although it's not sharp at all, might be a drawback for some users depending on your style of grip. I find the section is long enough that it isn't super obtrusive. 
See what I did there? The pen also has flat top and bottom finials. The Supernova is also not available in any gold nib options. It does have 11 steel nib sizes available, however, the standard EF, F, M, B, and a 1.5 stub, but also some very interesting variations with the two sizes of elastic nibs, two sizes of cursive italic, an architect, and even a Fude nib. The Supernova sells for a range of prices from $166 for the standard nibs, including the elastics and the stub, to $200 for the cursive italics, and $220 US for the Architect or Fude nibs. From the top, we see the flat acrylic top, and the cap tapers up to a three-band cap band, two thin bands bordering the thick geometric diamond pattern central band. The clip is the standard Leonardo roller clip, which is very springy and usable. The cap transitions to the barrel with no interruption, and the barrel tapers down all the way to a single ring separating the faux blind cap from the barrel, and the bottom is adorned with a flat metal cap. The cap unscrews with one rotation to reveal a large tapering barrel section of the same glorious caramel acrylic as the rest of the pen, and this number six size steel broad nib and black plastic feed. The section, as I said, is a refinement of the milk bottle shaped section of the Momento Zero and Furore. The cap threads here are very smooth and actually extend the section gripping area. This is a good thing because although I said this step wasn't sharp, it isn't dull either. And if you grip on that step after time, you'll feel it. Let's take a closer look at this nib. It is ruthenium plated steel and is one of the new La Fenice style nibs, although the steel versions of the La Fenice nib are manufactured by Yovo, as are all of the Leonardo steel nibs. It has the La Fenice radiating line pattern, but is slightly different than the Leonardo La Fenice gold nib. Yeah, let's look at them side by each here. You can see that the Leonardo made gold nib has a small triangle at the bottom of the breather hole right there, where the steel nib does not. And of course, the gold nib has 14 karat gold uh, stamped on it, but the, the B in broad is laser etched where it's stamped into the steel nib. The nib and feet are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for swapping or maintenance. The section unscrews to reveal the screw-in type standard international converter and the ruthenium plated steel section nozzle, but does not have the extended piston knob accessible via an unscrewable blind cap. The blind cap here is glued in place. I think this is a real missed opportunity by Leonardo. The inside of the cap shows a step milled into the acrylic that meets with the top of the section to seal the nib. Because the amber acrylic is translucent, you can see how the step elides into the section right there. The cap posts deeply and securely and slightly back weights the pen's center of balance. So when I write with it posted, I move my grip slightly further up, which also avoids gripping that step. Unposted, the pen is very comfortable in the hand and well balanced, but I do have to grip it further down the section to avoid that step. I bought this pen from Applebaum for $146.20 US with my 15% discount for posting a review on a previous purchase. You can get 10% off your Apple Bomb purchase by using the code FRIEND, F-R-I-E-N-D, when checking out online. Then once you receive your order, just go to the website and add your personal review comments, and Yoast will send you a 15% discount code for your next purchase. I should mention that it was sad to see the Apple Bomb brick and mortar store in Boston will be closing. And now let's look at some size comparisons. These will all be Leonardo's. This is the Supernova, followed by a Momento Zero in Blue Hawaii, a Momento Zero Grande 2.0 in Stardust, a Furore Grande in Smeraldo, and a Furore in Blue Galaxy. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. See, the Grandes are rather large when they're posted. The Momento Zero and the Furore are perfect as far as I'm concerned, and the Supernova is kind of in between. Uh, I can use it either posted or unposted, 
but I prefer writing with it unposted. Now let's look at them unposted, and here they are unposted. You can see that the Memento Zero Grande has the largest section of them all, with the Supernova being kind of in between the Memento Zero and the MZG 2.0. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM paper, and this is the Leonardo Supernova in caramel. And it has a number six size steel broad nib don't worry about that skip this pen was open for a while and the ink just needed to flow a little bit let's check the wetness and you'll see it's a very very wet and smooth nib it's quite the gusher and the ink is diamine or diamine, depending on what part of the country you're from. Ancient copper. And it's the only ink I use uh, with any finish like this, uh, which I call Amber as a Cat. Uh, they call it caramel, but it'll always be Amber as a Cat for me. And as to line variation, it has quite a bit of bounce to it for a steel nib. It's very nice. And this nib makes a 0 0.7 millimeter line which makes it a western medium to broad or a japanese broad to off the charts on my richard binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description below and for our quote And as for some reverse writing, it's actually not too bad at all. It's a lot drier, but a lot thinner as well. So sketchers might enjoy that. And for some quick writing. Yeah, that feed has no difficulty keeping up whatsoever. So what do I like and what do I not like about this Leonardo pen and which Leonardo is best? As far as which Leonardo is the best, for me of course, I made a spreadsheet to help me with the decision because of course I did. Here's the table that I made. I ranked the six models, the Memento Zero, Memento Zero 2.0, Ferrore, Ferrore Grande, Memento Zero Grande, and Supernova based on five criteria, looks, comfort, nib, features, and rank them on the price of the steel models. I didn't add the Magico to the list as I don't have one anymore to compare. I gave them points out of six in each of the categories except price. I'm not surprised that the Memento Zero came out seven points ahead of the others. I know this isn't very scientific when I'm subjectively giving points for looks and comfort, but this is a subjective evaluation. Your mileage will always vary because my tastes are different than yours, and well, this is my channel and I'm correct, and you're just wrong if you disagree with me. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? <laughs> just kidding. As to the supernova and what I like and I don't like, I absolutely adore the caramel amber is a cat acrylic. But you already knew that because I have a few amber cats in my collection. Here are a few from left to right. A Moonman M800, an Asvine P20 piston filler, my first amber is a cat, the Pen BBS 308, Pen BBS 480, Pen BBS 355 bulk filler, Pen BBS 456 vacuum filler, Pen BBS 495 piston filler, Pen BBS 500 spring filler, and the Pen BBS 323 with an added sparkly roll stop. And I really like the dark ruthenium trim and how it complements the dark stripes of this amber acrylic finish. And I love 
the broad nib. The more I write with it, the more I realize that Jack won't be cutting this into an architect for me. Some broad nibs are too thick and gushy for me to control. The La Fenice gold nib on my Momento Zero Masterpiece is like that. But this one is nicely controlled and I can write with it without getting great big gobs of greasy grimer gopher guts all over my page. Great big gobs of greasy grimy gopher guts. I also like that I can grip the pen in multiple places to avoid the step down and that the pen can be balanced both posted and unposted. This will vary of course with individual grip styles. And I like that even though there are no gold nib options for this pen, the Supernova has all these new steel nib options like Fude, Architect, and Curse of Italics. And even though you can get gold nibs from Leonardo that will fit the Supernova, I think Leonardo should make these cool steel nib options available individually so Leonardo lovers can add some variety to their existing Leos without having to shell out for an entirely new pen. But that's just me. There are a couple of things that I don't like about the Supernova. The step down is probably a game changer for some people, but you should know that going in. I can get around the step and I like the profile of the pen when it's capped. It's very sleek and elegant. I think Leonardo missed an opportunity to put the same extended gold plated piston knob on the converter and allow the blind cap to unscrew to access it like on the Momento Zero and the Furore. It's a nice feature and I use it all the time on those pens and I really miss it here on the Supernova. And there you have it. Let me know which is your favorite Leonardo and if you don't have one, which model you would pass gas for. Oh dear, did I break wind? That's pen acquisition syndrome, gear acquisition syndrome. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. You can join as a member of my channel as well for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, sneak peek unboxing videos, as well as early access to all of my videos the moment I upload them. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.